A majority of keyboard layouts are going to be the same, regardless of the type, or the make, or the model that you use. But I want to go over it very quickly, what keyboard parts are different, especially when you talk about laptop keyboards versus regular desktop keyboard. Laptop keyboards can often have keys in several places, so you might need to become more familiar with your laptop than you do with a regular keyboard. All of them are going to have alphanumeric and symbol keys. It is called a Quetta layout, by the way. And if you wonder where the name came from, just look at your keyboard. If you look at the first line of letters there, Q, W, E, R, T, Y. So the Quetta layout is the easy way that opposed to defining alphanumeric keys. This layout maybe seems odd to you. Just know that when they first created typewriters, somebody thought about this and they put the combination so that they are easier to work with than it would be if you plainly outline the letters and numbers in alphanumeric order. Now you're also going to see any sets of standard keys. This can include a shift, caps lock, tab, escape, control, alt windows, control keys, page up and page down, home and backspace, and even more. Now these maybe seems very foreign to you right now, but these are keys that you will use very often. For example, you're typing you're going to use the shift key to make an uppercase letter. Or if you want to type in all uppercase, you might use the cups lock, so you don't have to hold the shift key. Likewise, the tab key can be used, but it does different things. The tab key can either move you across the page if you're doing word processing, or it can skip you from field to field when you're filling out something like an online form. We won't talk about all these right now, but as we work through this course, we talk about many of these keys and how. They can be used as shortcuts for menu commands. These are the function keys that I mentioned in the previous term, the F1 to F12. Now these function keys have specific uses, and the function depends on what application you happen to be working in. One I can tell you right now is that F1 almost always brings up help window. All the rest of them, F2 through F12, will do very different things, depending on which operating system or which application you happen to be working around. As I stated, you might have a 10 keypad for quick numeric entry, which is great when you're trying to key in a lot of numbers. You might also have those special media or computer keys. With this in mind, let's take a look at an actual keyboard so we can see where all these different parts reside. Now remember, this is just a sample keyboard and your keyboard may be a little bit different. The idea of these keys though, and the location of most of them, will be very similar in most keyboards anyway. Naturally, we're going to commence with those alphanumeric and symbols that we've talked about. If you're familiar with a typewriter, these are going to be the same. But you know what? It's interesting in the generation of these days, many people, especially the younger generation, have never even touched an actual typewriter. The only thing they know is keyboarding. We don't even find typing classes anymore. They're all keyboarding classes. So for those of you who are a little bit older, like I am, we can comprehend a kind of smile about the fact 
that typing and typewriters are somewhat old technology. Instead, we call it keyboarding. But the alphanumerics that we see highlighted here are operating to be the same. It is the QWERTY layout keyboard that we're talking about in this lesson. Before we type, we often need to work with making capital letters or using symbols instead of numbers. Typing in all capital letters or erasing letters by backspacing. So, I've highlighted here the shift keys which can be found on both the left and the right sides of the lower part of the keyboard. We also have the cups lock, the one highlighted. On the upper right is the backspace which allows you to erase or go from right to left. I've also highlighted the enter or the return key which is how we go on a new line in a computer or do a paragraph break. We do not get too much on that one because it's more about word processing. But these are very basic keys that almost everybody uses anytime. Next comes the 10 keypads. As you can see, the layout is very similar to a 10 key calculator. You also see along the top and the right edge that we have the basic mathematical symbols the forward slash for division, the asterisk for multiplication, the dash for subtraction, the plus sign for addition. There are also an enter key which allows you to set an entry. Another important key is on the upper left. This key is the NAMLA key. If you ever are typing and you are trying to type numbers on your 10 key, but instead it's moving the cursor, it means you need to press that key. When this is disabled, you can see, for example, on number four, there's a left arrow. If the number lock is not on, then pressing the number four is going to move your cursor to the left. Likewise, the number six moves it to the right. Number eight moves the cursor up. Number two moves it down. And you can see that there are other things there as well, like page up, page down, home, and end. So if your 10 key isn't typing numbers and you want it to work, then press the NumLa key. The more common way to move your cursor using the keyboard is to use the cursor on the arrow keys, usually located between alphanumeric keys and the 10 key. These are simply up, down, left, and right, and will move your cursor on the specified direction. Just above the arrow keys is a set of six special keys that I use quite a bit. They include insert and delete, home and end, page up and page down. The insert key toggles you between insert mode and overtype mode, which again we won't talk about here because that's a word processing thing. Delete key is a kind of the opposite of backspace. When you press the backspace key, it erases things to the left of the cursor. When you press the delete, it deletes things to the right of the cursor. The delete key can also be used to remove something that is selected. So for example, if you left click on the file to select it and then press delete, it would delete the file from the computer. The home key moves your cursor to the beginning of the line and the end key moves it to the end of the line. And the page up and page down keys are simply scroll your screen up and down in the appropriate direction. Now we get some of these special keys there next, is the one on each side of the spacebar. The short version of this is that these keys 
usually in combination with other special keys that allow you to do special things. For example, pressing the Alt key and a letter will display a menu. Alt F, for example, displays the file menu instead of having to click it on with the mouse. The control key usually does system things. For example, control P print something, control S saves something, and control O will open something. These are some shortcuts that we'll go through again as we move on to the course. But just so you know for now, Control plus Alt are often used in combination with other keys to perform special functions. Recent keyboards will also have Windows key of some sort and this is used for doing special window things. Now I'll demonstrate some of these when we get into talking about Windows Desktop. One of the things that it does though is, this is the same as clicking on the start button. So again, if you don't have a mouse or you don't want to move your mouse, you could press this button on the keyboard to display the start menu, which we've already seen a couple of times in the previous course. Then we get to those function keys, which I've mentioned a couple of times, F1 through F12. F1 almost always bring up help for whatever you happen to be in. So if you're looking at Windows Desktop, it will bring up help for Windows. If you were with Microsoft Word, it would bring up help for Microsoft Word. The rest of the function keys do very different things depending on specific application that you're in. And that's part of learning about those software programs. The last key that we'll talk about is the escape key. Now, I love the escape key because it does some nice things. The escape key lets us back out of something. So if I selected something and I didn't want to go ahead and click on something inside of that, I could press escape to get out of it. If I display a menu, it will hide a menu if I open a dialog box. Pressing escape will close the dialog box without having a click or without having to make a choice. We'll talk more about the escape key as we work with some special applications as well. So now, when you look at the keyboard, you can see that instead of just being a whole bunch of buttons, they are found in specific areas. These are tend to do specific things you may or you may not use. All the buttons that you should get familiar with, what of each of these can do, even if it may have a special function with a certain piece of software or application.